Happy Labor Day to all you in the USA. My name's D7 here at Grok Trade, and this is the Long Weekend Edition. Good through Monday, September 7th, 2015. And kicking off the week on Friday. Markets, for the most part, down. The S&P down 1.5%, the Dow down 1.65%, the NASDAQ down one2 one two percent small caps down zero point seven six percent banks off by a, more than a half a percent silver off by zero point seven one percent gold off by zero point three percent and crude oil down by one point seven percent u.s dollar down a fraction and vix up more than seven percent that's the fear indicator and first thing i want to do show you for the week, what has taken place, I'm looking at finviz.com, and everybody in negative territory as far as the sectors are concerned, with utilities doing the worst, down 5%, and yeah, basic materials down about the same. Conglomerates, which are big companies holding a lot of different businesses uh, within its or under its umbrella. Financials were down 4.4%. If you look for the month, financials are actually doing the poorest here which is not good. Three months here, you'll see that basic materials are down more than 20%. For six months, basic materials down quite a bit. You'll see that financial six months ago was fourth on the list, and it stayed the same for three months. If you look at one month, financials dropped to the bottom, and closing out the week, financials ended up at fourth again. So... Here we are taking a look at the S&P 500 ETF or exchange traded fund. And this is called the Spider. And, and if you look closely here, you will see a bunch of thumbs. The green thumbs were buy, uh, buy signals that I gave. And then I want you to see what happened after that. Look at all the green thumbs and ask yourself if you had purchased here then sold here, would you have made money? Yes. If you sold here, bought to cover, or went long here, would you have made money? Yes. Here again, you bought, then you sell, another money maker, then you sell, made money down, then you buy to cover or purchase, reverse your trade, made money again, go higher here, same thing, we bought, we sold, then we sold a second position here so we got two cells we're, we're short we double our short we drop 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 and here we do a bear pullback here and or a dead cat bounce if you will and then here's our third short and look where we're at now so on a daily chart we're down quite a bit so the question is would you follow somebody who made these calls and showed this sort of track record and how do we know that these were actually calls that were made? Here's how. If you go to tradingview.com, once you're there, type in SPY. Once you type in SPY, then I want you to click on this little light bulb. If you click on the light bulb, you're going to see a ton of dots pop up. These dots are basically published ideas. I can publish an idea. They are permanent. They cannot be changed. Once you do it, it is it is static it does not move and so a good call or a bad call will be there but you'll notice inside all my thumbs mine are triangles the reason they're triangles is because i'm logged in under myself d7 if you want to follow me type in d-7 spell it out and you'll find me or you can go to the spider look for a dot it will not be a triangle it will be a dot hover over it and there you can click on me and then follow me if you want to follow me go to tradingview.com and follow the steps rewind the video if you want to do it but what i would say here is we are killing it here at grok trade on our calls nobody else here you, you can look for anybody else that's making calls and look for this sort of consistency on the long side and the bear side and you will not find anybody but me who is doing that 
So let's get rid of this and let's get into some trades and some setups. What's interesting here is we had this we had this drop on the major markets. And if you notice, you remember, remember I said that the the length of the trading bars here should be getting smaller, not bigger, but these got bigger. Look at the trading range of this versus this or this versus that huge one. They got bigger going down on big volume. So it's dropping on increased volume with bigger trading ranges on the descent. Here we go up higher, higher, higher with smaller trading. Do you see that? Smaller trading ranges going higher on descending volume. Great time to go short. And then we go into this little choppy mess here. We really had this sizable drop and then we're kind of chopping around sideways. We're below all major moving averages here. We have my 20 day coming down, you have a 50 and a 200 up above it. So uh, the markets are in bad shape when you're below all major moving averages. I did act, um, add my MACD down here, five, nine and two as my filter, and that helps me see trend reversals. And what I'm gonna do is bring in the weekly chart. The weekly chart's very important to me. And we were going higher, 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 higher. On the MACD, we had a bearish divergence come into play as we go higher. We go into a rising wedge. We have a rolling over effect taking place. You can see it from the tops of these rolling over. We roll over and then crash and burn. Last week, we, went, man, we had a big, big dip. We tried to go bullish, but this week we did not. We have an inside trading candle week. This is a pause where the markets are saying, what's going to happen here? What should have happened this week is a big bullish move based off of this candlestick, so more opportunity to the high side before it hit resistance and dropped again. I'm not sure it has it in it to do that. I think that we have a better chance of stalling, continuing going sideways next week, or we're going to see a continuation drop. Now we have to be careful. If the SPY gets over 200, now I'm going to actually add an alert for myself. And I'm going to call this bullish. And that will tell me that I want to be looking at that. If we get over 200, I want to be looking at the markets on the bullish side, lightening up on my shorts. So I am short this market. And then add maybe some long positions and, le and until we at least get to this area. Taking a look at the monthly chart, the month, we had a brutal, brutal last month. Boom, 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 boom. Here, this month, September, we're still brutal. We're below a lot of areas of support, all major moving averages, and it's looking pretty bad here for September. Wouldn't surprise me to see this red candlestick drop lower, but we have a big area of support right here coming across at 181 that we will have to watch for. This is the diamonds monthly chart. In the diamonds monthly chart, you'll see that we had this huge support. Well, that support was broken last month just by a smidgen and we continue on the wrong side of support. Well, now that should act as resistance. If I go here to the weekly chart on the diamonds, you will see much of the same thing that we're looking at on the spider. Big drop down below all major moving averages in a stall this week. If I go to the Right here, we're looking at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ here, last week, went down, started off bullish or ended bullish. But then we have another inside trading day below, below all major moving averages on the weekly chart here. Now, if I go over here to the, I'm going to go to the daily tech. This is the, uh, I want to go here to the NASDAQ. And this is the daily chart. We're up here and then we go bad, 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 bad. We try to rally and then we chop sideways. We got this pennant. It's kind of a bearish pennant because it develops at the low of this leg. So here it'd be interesting to see with this pitching pattern, all moving averages above it acting as resistance, if this thing will break to the downside with some ferocity. So that's something I am watching for in the markets. Small caps rustles. Uh, you will see here on the daily chart, we broke support. Now it's resistance. We're below all major moving averages. It looks like this thing's going to want to break down. If you look here at the bank's daily chart, we go had this head and shoulders. We drop 
and we're just chopping around sideways with the moving averages acting as resistance. If you go here to the weekly chart on the banks, big drop made a higher high and a higher low, so relatively a little more bullish than the indices are showing us, but still in a lot of trouble nonetheless. And silver, if you look here at a daily chart, silver, big falling wedge. So this is a bullish formation, falling wedge. We do not have a bullish divergence on the MACD yet. So I'm not saying this is a long yet on the daily. Now, if we go to the weekly on silver, silver is a big falling wedge and a tighter, tighter falling wedge. So look for a big move one direction or the other. I think it has a better chance of going up than going down right now. And if you want to take a quick gander at the monthly chart on silver, this month we're starting on a bullish note. So on a monthly long-term position, it looks like silver is a buy. Now gold monthly chart, there's the big falling wedge. We're at resistance area. Still has some more downside potential here, but it could break out. If it gets above 110, gold could be a buy. Matter of fact, I'm going to put myself a an alert in if it busts over this area. Now, if I go to a weekly chart on gold, you'll see that for it to break out, it's going to have to bust this trend line. So that would be an area that I would be interested in maybe going long gold. Pretty cool, and here I want to take a look at oil. Big falling wedge on oil on the daily chart. High base, like oil is wanting to break out to the upside. If you look here on the weekly chart of oil, big drop, 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 huge volume, big volume on the up. So it looks like we're probably trying to put in a bottom on oil at this moment. And on the monthly chart on oil, top, down, down, falling wedge. I mean, with huge volume, this is capitulation taking place. I could see oil being at a low at this moment with a lot of upside potential, guys. I do not see oil getting much lower uh, than this. So all you guys trading oil, there you have it. And I want to show you um, here at Grok Trade, uh, we do have a brand new course. It's a hedging course. If you go down at the bottom, there's a big time discount for you. One time fee, you can learn all about how to hedge to protect yourself and your assets in the markets. Once you go up here, I want you to look at some of the mentorship. We have a mentorship coming up in November, middle of November. You want to join us. It's a live mentorship in Vegas. Read the blog. I had a student send me an email. I share the email and my response on the blog. And if you want to, if you're a day trader, feel free to day trade with us. Trading education. If you haven't done so, sign up for the free one-on-one -on -one courses. If you want a foundation in place, you definitely want to fill out this form so you can start getting you emails sent to you. You'll you'll get five or six, I believe, six educational emails and their videos of us teaching you the very foundation of trading. So if you like the video, like it. If you find it very beneficial, share it. And like always, down below, you can subscribe and never miss one of our videos. Take care and all the best to you on this happy Labor Day long weekend.